Can I tell you a funny story? Oh, please, yes. Back in the 60s, in one of my earlier operations, I had three colleagues, and we decided to do a four-person invocation. Now, this bears on your question about should you have other people in the circle, uh, which this anecdote will finish up by concluding no. Should you be isolated from everywhere? And the answer to that is yes. So we had a sound studio to do it in, which was brilliant because A, we could record the entire operation um, at high quality. B, we could hear no noise from outside. And C, we were guaranteed no interruption. Now, there was a couple of downsides. One of them was it had a highly efficient aircon system. So whenever we turned the incense on, it spiraled up in the air and got sucked out through the, the air vents. But, you know, you got to live with these things. So now we performed the operation, and one of the guys in the group who is no longer with us, he's passed on, uh, was a bit of a joker. And so after we'd done 95% of the operation, we built up quite a lot of tension. The tension was magical. There was also psychological tension because um, the, the four of us were fairly new at this sort of stuff. He'd recently been reading Alice Bailey, who he thought was a um, very tendentious, long-winded, pain-in-the-ass writer. Now, that's not necessarily my opinion of her, and I don't wish to offend anybody who, who venerates her writing. But... You must admit that she's a bit long-winded and a little bit boring. So uh, he'd been thinking about this, and we reached the, almost reached the climax. And he, being an idiot joker, intoned Alice Bailey in a, a very effective vibratory form. And the entire edifice of the ritual collapsed, not physically, but the, the magical edifice and we all broke out laughing because we knew what his opinion of Alice Bailey was, and we killed ourselves. And oh. at which stage I said, look, you've just completely ruined the operation. We've been building up to this for weeks. And I was oh. quite annoyed, actually. Yeah, um, I don't blame you. And uh, the others were, oh, well, you know, it's just him. And uh, so we adjourned for the night and picked up the equipment and, and left and locked up the studio and went home. In the morning, I got an alarmed phone call from the guy who actually had the job of looking after the studio because because of him, we got to use the studio. And he said, you will never guess what's happened. And I said, what, did we get the, the spirit we were calling? No, no, nothing like that. But this morning, a crazy person arrived with a, a station wagon absolutely crammed with boxes of books and those books were every single edition of Alice Bailey in every language she's ever published in, in every paperback or hardback edition. <laughs> he arrived in front of the library next door. This is a university premises. I really shouldn't admit that we were using university premises, but we were. And demanded to see the head librarian and said, I have come to donate these to the library. And the librarian said, well, you know, what are they? And he said, every single edition of Alice Bailey's wonderful work and this will be a great advantage to the university. And the librarians there trying to decline this. This is before the days when libraries actually declined donations. And he's getting more and more frenetic. In the end, he unloaded on the pavement, which was the common pavement for the sound assistant studio and also for the library, got in his car and drove off. So the librarian had no choice. And I went, well, the magic worked but it didn't work in the way we wanted. So there's a couple of lessons from this that if you are building to a climax, you've got to keep going, and you've got to keep going with what you originally intended to do. Do not take an idiot into the circle who is going to suddenly do something like this. That's a good reason for not taking idiots into the circle. Uh, before that, I thought he was a sensible lad, but his sense of humor overcame his feeling of awe for the magic. And, and then I realized that magic can easily have effects in the external world. Now, the effect was possibly by acting on the mind of this obviously slightly deranged person, but it resulted in a physical conclusion. And from that, I realized that quite often the spirits will actually work on other people to bring about the result because they've got no hands. They can't do it themselves physically. 
So I learned quite a few lessons from that, but um, there you go. Just a small <laughs> anecdote. Oh, I think wow! That I'm gonna I will literally never forget that story. That is absolutely hilarious. It is chilling to it to a certain effect, and it, it truly is a lesson. I just can't believe. I mean, my goodness! Just uttering and intoning the name caused that entire shift in space time and spiritual assistance and all of that for that person to drive up in a in a station wagon. Was it? Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah it was. The spirit being called was in fact Mercury. And we all know that Mercury deals with books and things. And uh, obviously it had arrived and we had no knowledge of its arrival because we were all pretty amateur at it in those days. And it acted. And boy, did it act. (laughs) Nobody ever told the librarian what had happened, but the four of us knew what had happened and we kept it to ourselves. In fact, this may be the first time anybody has um, mentioned what happened in those days. 